Welcome to a series of short videos from the CISI introducing the ESMA guidelines for the assessment of knowledge and competence. My name is Pranit Chiraprasad, International Manager at the Institute. I'm going to be presenting you the background to these regulatory changes. Article 25 of MIFID II states that investment firms should ensure that persons giving investment advice or providing information should possess the necessary levels of knowledge and competence to fulfil their obligations under Articles 24 and 25 of MIFID II. The purpose of these Articles of MIFID II are to strengthen the protection of investors and also to reinforce trust of investors and confidence in the financial markets. One question that we get a lot from firms is who is an information provider? Giving information is defined within the directive as providing information to clients about financial instruments, structured deposits, investment services or ancillary services either upon the request of the client or at the initiative of the firm. One example of where this is not the case is where employees are simply distributing brochures or leaflets to clients without providing additional information. Investment advice is defined as providing investment advice or giving information about financial instruments, structured deposits, investment services or ancillary services to clients. Please note that both wholesale and retail clients are included within the definition of client within MIFID II. The guidelines set out two sets of obligations, firstly for regulators. Regulators are required to publish information on appropriate qualifications, whether that be a list, or in the case that there is no list of appropriate qualifications, the regulator should set out the characteristics that appropriate qualification needs to meet. The regulator is also required to set out the period of time under which an individual can gain the appropriate experience. This is usually a minimum of six months, and they're also required to publish the amount of time under which a staff can advise or work under supervision, and this is up to a maximum of four years. There are also requirements on investment firms. The first requirement for firms is, is to ensure that affected individuals possess an appropriate qualification. This will either be a qualification published by the regulator on their list, or a qualification that meets the criteria or characteristics set out by the regulator. The second requirement on firms is to ensure that affected individuals undertake CPD or continuous professional development on an annual basis and that this can be evidenced to the regulator for each individual. And finally is to ensure that each individual adheres to standards of business ethics and meets all legal requirements. These three obligations fit nicely within the three pillars of what CISI offers of qualifications, CPD and integrity and ethics. The final report was published by ESMA on the 17th of January 2015, with an amendment published on the 3rd of January 2017. A key date for firms will be the 3rd of January 2018, when MIFID II comes into force, and firms will need to ensure at this point that affected individuals meet all of the ESMA requirements. It's important to note that to meet these requirements, different departments within the organisation will need to work effectively together, including human resources, learning and development, training and competence, compliance and senior management. To summarise this introduction to the guidelines, firstly it's important that firms understand which employees fall under the regulations. Secondly, that firms identify appropriate qualification solutions for each affected employee. And finally, that they ensure that all affected individuals have successfully attained an appropriate qualification by the 3rd of January 2018.